So radioactive decay, the key thing about it, it's also known as nuclear chemistry, not nuclear, but nuclear as in nucleus, is when particles within a nucleus decompose to form a different nucleus of a different atom. And you form a new element as a result of this. Now, what causes elements to be radioactive is when the energy that holds the nucleus together isn't strong enough, and so things break apart. There's this thing called binding energy, or the strong nuclear force, you don't really need to know this for this course, that holds the nucleus together, and if that's not strong enough, or if you have the wrong ratio of protons to neutrons, things start to fall apart. And there is a radioactive isotope of every element. So there's at least one radioactive form of every single element that exists. And then some elements, every isotope is radioactive. And if you have an atomic number greater than 83, so for instance, starting with polonium on the periodic table, all of the elements numbered 83 and higher, um, every isotope is radioactive. There's also two others. You have technetium and promethium are also have every isotope be radioactive. This kind of shows you a little graphic here. You've got a number of protons on the x-axis, neutrons on the y-axis, and you can see uh, the ones represented by black squares are stable and every other one represents a radioactive isotope of an element. Uh, you might be familiar with carbon-12 and carbon-14. If you'll remember, the top number is the, um, is the mass, protons plus neutrons. The bottom number is just protons. So carbon-12 has six protons and 12 minus six, six neutrons. And carbon-14 has six protons and 14 minus six, or eight neutrons. Carbon-14 is radioactive. Carbon-12 is not radioactive. Carbon-14 is what's used in radiocarbon dating. So for this course, there's three types of radioactive decay that you need to know, which are named for the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. The first is alpha decay, where you release an alpha particle, which is essentially the nucleus of a helium atom. It's two protons and two neutrons that get ejected from the nucleus. They just come flying out. It is the weakest type of radioactive decay. If you have a piece of paper, you can use that piece of paper to shield you from alpha particles. And obviously, since it's two protons and two neutrons, your mass goes down by four. And by losing two protons, you become a new element. So if we look at an example, let's say that... Um, there's a form of argon, say it's argon 42, and it undergoes alpha decay. Those number eight P. Well, an alpha particle is the nucleus of a helium atom. It's represented by this. This represents an alpha particle, or the Greek letter alpha, but alpha particle is 4,2-H-E. So the other thing that you get, we have to conserve both atomic number and atomic mass. So if we start with 42 as our mass, we end up with 4 plus something. And 4 plus what is 42? That would be 38. And then for protons, we started with 18. We lost two, so that's going to leave us with 16. And the element with 16 protons is sulfur. So that's an example of alpha decay. Next, we have beta decay, where you release a beta particle. And a beta particle is an electron, which is formed when a neutron breaks apart. So essentially, a neutron can disintegrate, turning into both a proton, which stays behind in the nucleus, and an electron, which gets ejected from the nucleus. So if you want to visualize this, you can visualize a 
neutron is essentially being a proton plus an electron smushed together. And it can break apart, leaving behind a proton. And then the electron that's ejected is the beta particle. And when this happens, this electron has more energy than an alpha particle. So you can stop it with either a thin piece of metal or a thick piece of wood. So aluminum foil is typically thick enough to stop beta particles. Yeah. So the neutron breaks apart into a proton and an electron. So you have the same mass essentially because electrons have basically no mass when they're ejected. But when your neutron turns into a proton, your atomic number goes up by one. So if we check out the periodic table, if you undergo alpha decay, you're losing mass. So you're going to move to the left on the periodic table. If you undergo beta decay, you're gaining protons. So you move one spot to the right. So alpha decay would take you two spots to the left as you lose two protons. Beta decay, you turn a neutron into a proton, you move one spot to the right on the periodic table. So that's how beta decay works. So if we want to look at an example of beta decay, let's say that you have a uh, francium uh, 223. And let's say that it undergoes beta decay. Well, a beta particle is written, it's got a mass of zero. Since it's an electron, which is the opposite of a proton, for an atomic number, we write negative one and we write E to symbolize electrons. So this is our beta particle. And then the thing we're going to be left with, well, francium, its atomic number, if we look on the periodic table, is 87. So 223 plus uh, it gives you 0 plus 223, so our mass stays the same. And 87 is equal to negative 1 plus 88. So these numbers on the bottom have to add together to equal 87. So that's 88. And element 88 on the periodic table is radium. So we write in Ra for radium. Then we're going to look at our third type of radioactive decay, which is gamma decay, where you release a gamma ray, which is electromagnetic wave with high frequency, short wavelength. If you'll remember from the electromagnetic spectrum, gamma rays are very high energy. And they can be stopped with several centimeters of lead or several feet of concrete. So they're much higher energy. And usually gamma rays are released with alpha or beta decay. It doesn't generally just happen all by itself. But since it's just a form of energy and not mass, it doesn't affect the nuclear composition like the alpha and beta decay. So we don't write decay equations, which is what we call these things right here that I was just drawing out for you. So we don't write special equations for that. Um, I do want to show you uh, one quick little illustration here. Uh, let's say that you have three different particles. And right here we have paper. Here we have wood. And here we have concrete. Well, the particle that gets stopped by the paper is an alpha particle. The particle that gets stopped by the wood is a beta particle. And the particle that gets stopped by the concrete is a gamma. And by the way, just to clarify, yes, concrete would stop all three particles from going through it uh, and wood would stop both alpha and beta particles but paper is only sufficient to stop alpha particles so the other thing i want to do is look work through a couple more decay equations with you and see if we can figure out what is missing
So in this one right here, in the first one, 218 polonium. Well, first of all, we need to find polonium on the periodic table. It's number 84. So we'll plug in its atomic number there. And then 218 decays into 4 plus something that equals 218. So 4 plus what is 218? That'd be 214. And then 84 protons. Well, here's two protons. That's going to leave 82 behind. And then the element with 82 protons is lead with the symbol PB. Then we have another one. Here we've got 210 lead. We just saw that lead's atomic number is 82, so we'll go on and write that in. Whoops. We'll go on and write that in for us. 82. And then if we start with a mass of 210, we don't lose any mass. We're going to end up with a mass of 210. And if we started with 82 protons, and a neutron turned into another proton, that's going to give us 83 protons. And the element with 83 protons is bismuth with the symbol Bi. And then, last but not least, we have uranium-238, and uranium's atomic number is 92. And that decays to make thorium which has atomic number 90. These are down in the actinides on your periodic table. And so if we try to figure out what we're missing here, 238 makes 234 plus 4. 92 makes 90 plus 2. And element number 2 is helium. So that's an alpha particle. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you.